Hello and welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event tonight. I'm Jennifer, your facilitator. Before we get started, we've got a few housekeeping items for you today. We have just we have some fantastic schools that are excited to share a bit of what they have to offer with each of you. The six schools have six minutes to share their institution, but they'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. Your camera and microphone are off though, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can leave a question for any and all of the representatives to answer about their school, or you can leave a directed question by including the school's name with your question and the representative will know you're hoping to hear from them. This is just one of many different sessions that have happened. We hope you enjoyed the other sessions and rounds that were earlier today. All of these presentations have been recorded and they will be available in the coming days at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. All right, well, I'm excited to kick us off and get started with our very first school. We're going to be hearing all about Occidental College. Hello, hello everyone, good evening. Thank you for having the energy to stick with us after so many other sessions. My name is Jesse. I am an Assistant Dean of Admission at Occidental College, fondly known as Oxy, um, and I'm also an alum, so I'm really happy to talk to you today about this liberal arts college in Los Angeles. Um, so just sort of by the numbers, we're a smaller school, just about 2,000 students, um, and a huge benefit of our campus is that we're just an undergraduate community, so you're not competing with grad students to get spots in classes or spots doing research. Everything on our campus is really built for you as an undergraduate student. Um, we're also historically one of the most diverse liberal arts colleges in the country, with about half of our students identifying as students of color and having a lot of really great geographic representation across not only the U.S., but also the whole world. Um, we're represented by 48 states, so West Virginia, North Dakota people out there, please apply. Please come to Oxy so we can say we're represented by all 50 states. Um, and you'll also see that we have a pretty robust international student population on our campus as well. So it's really important to us that we're recruiting students who um, are maybe not been to college before, who are first gen, or who maybe would not otherwise have a pathway to Oxy. Um, just to sort of orient you, um, we are actually the only liberal arts college within the city of Los Angeles, and it's really rare to have a liberal arts environment within a large city. Most liberal arts colleges are in more rural or suburban areas, so this is really a best of both worlds situation, if you ask me. Um, you can sort of see the campus concentrated at the bottom of the screen here with these nice tiled buildings and that big green field. Um, we're about 20 minutes from downtown Los Angeles in LA traffic sort of translation, that's what eight miles is. Um, and we're in a really sweet neighborhood called Eagle Rock, which has a really sort of college town feel, very suburban vibe, but again, it's very, very much in LA and very much um, easily accessible for you to do an internship in downtown LA or to shadow a filmmaker in Hollywood or to spend your weekends at the beach at the Pacific Ocean. Um, so again, it really has that best of both worlds quality. Um, because we are a liberal arts college, we really give you a lot of free reign in terms of what you want to study. Um, what's really helpful is that we do have core requirements, which is sort of a framework for you to structure your first two years on campus and find your way to a major that's really naturally interesting to you. Um, so you can see a list of everything that we require on the left-hand side here. It's a little bit of everything, a little bit of math, a little bit of arts, a little bit of diversity in America, um, so that by the time you graduate, you are an expert in many things, not just in your major. Um, because we are such a small school, like I said, only 2,000 students, our classroom environments are really intimate as well. So there are no classes on our campus with more than 50 students. That includes something like Econ 101, which at a large public university could have upwards of 300 people in a lecture hall. At Oxy, the average class size is 18 students, and that holds true for all of our courses. The student to faculty ratio here is nine to one. So the type of support you get is incredibly individualized and very specific to who you are um, versus just being the type of cookie cutter support that your professor might give to all of their students. Um, so it's very special to get that kind of hands-on experience. 
like many liberal arts colleges, you have a lot of different areas of study to choose from. Um, hopefully something or a couple things on this list stand out to you. Um, but if they don't, that's totally fine as well. So actually all of our students come to the college undeclared and you have until the end of your sophomore year to choose your major. So I think the core program is nice because it sort of builds in this very natural exploration where students find their way to a major and a minor that's interesting to them. Um, we also offer pre-law and pre-health slash pre-med track. So if you're interested in law school or med medical school, um, we're a really great option for that as well. As you may have noticed, we have some QR codes on each slide. This is the most rapid fire presentation ever. So feel free, scan those QR codes as we go through this presentation, explore the website, and you know, always reach out if you have more questions. Because we are located in LA, a lot of our classes are not confined to a traditional classroom setting. We have a lot of field-based coursework and a lot of really hands-on experiential coursework as well. Um, so in the top left here, you're going to see one of our urban and environmental policy courses out in the city of Los Angeles, really topic, talking about urban mapping and how that um, impacts different demographics within LA. Um, we also have students do internships at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which is about 15 minutes away. So if you're interested, in chemistry, astrophysics, anything like that, it's right up the road. Um, and in the bottom right here, you see students in an economics class visiting the port of LA to learn about global trading systems. Um, bottom left, probably self-explanatory. This is just a fun field trip to Dodger Stadium, um, just some sort of fun student enrichment not related to academics. Um, and like many colleges and universities, we offer both research and study abroad opportunities. What's very special about these opportunities at Oxy is that you can start doing research as soon as your freshman year, and you can collaborate with your professors on their research. So this is a very unique opportunity. You don't have to wait till the graduate school level to engage in this kind of work, um, and often makes you a very strong applicant to post-grad opportunities, whether that's your career or continuing your higher education journey and going to graduate school. Um, and finally, we do have an on-campus living requirement. So our residential experience is incredibly rich. Students live on campus for at least three years, but the majority of students actually choose to stay on campus for a senior year as well. Um, I think this really just speaks to what a wonderful collaborative living environment we have. Um, this is a picture here of a typical double room. So you'll get a good sense of, you know, size and scale. We are built on a really gorgeous hill. So you'll be able to get a good sense of that too. And finally, important things to note about the admission process. We have a few deadlines here. We're a test optional institution. And in terms of financial aid, we meet 100% of demonstrated needs. So we're an incredibly affordable private college. That's it for me. Thanks, everybody. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jesse, for starting us off with Occidental College. All right, we're going to move on to Dominican University of California. Hello, everyone. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, perfect. So my name is Maddie. I'm from Dominican University of California. I'm one of our undergraduate admissions counselors. I'm for the Southern California region. I'm also joined by our um, assistant director, Antonia Pettit, who is also here with me. We'll be doing our Q&A portion. So Dominican University of California, we're a smaller liberal arts private institution located in the San Francisco Bay Area. Our university has a little bit of a smaller feel. Um, so our average class size is around 16 with a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. So you're getting that hands-on and one-on-one um, -on -one time with your professors. We have 1900 students on our campus currently. Um, we are 18 best value schools um, and 87.5% of our students stay for their second year, which is awesome. Our school is really small and it kind of grows a tight knit community. So we're founded in 1890. So we're a little bit older. 99% of our students receive financial aid and 22% of our students are first gen. So diversity, equity, and inclusion is really important to us at Dominican with 71% of our student population identifying as ethnically diverse. We are a designated minority serving institution and in MSI. We also are a Hispanic serving institution and an Asian American, Native American, and Pacific Islander serving institution as well. So with that, we have many student identity and inclusion groups, including BSU, Black Student Union, Pride, Latin Unidos, Muslim Student Association, Capamilia, uh, Student Diversity in Action, Torch, which is for our first generation students, and Ignite, which is women in politics. These are just some of our many student identity and inclusion groups we have on our campus. 
So our education is really accessible to all students, which makes us really important in that way. So we are one of the top five best value colleges in the Bay Area, and we're an A-plus school for B students. Um, and we're also, as I said before, quite ethnically diverse on our campus. With this accessible education, we have those smaller class sizes for one-on-one -on -one time, as well as our accessibility services to make sure every student has um, the ability to be set up for success. We also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching all the way through as soon as you are um, in the admissions process, you're stuck with us on the admissions side, then we'll pass you off to academic advising, your professors, student services, so you always have someone there in a large support system on our campus. Our academic programs, we have over 60 majors, minors, and concentrations. We offer bachelor's degree programs. We are um, a liberal arts university, so we have a lot of arts and humanities, but we're also known for our health and natural sciences as well. So our top programs are currently nursing, business administration, psychology, education, and biology with our pre-med concentration. We have a few new programs as well, such as sociology and kinesiology and criminology, all the ologies that we now have that we started offering. These academic programs are great. As I said, you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with those smaller class sizes. You're not sitting in big lecture halls with 500 people. Our largest class sizes are usually around 30. So you kind of get that good experience. All your questions are answered and um, all of that experience for after if you're going to grad school or if you're looking for internships, there's always going to be someone there to help you out. So athletics, we are an NCAA Division II university. These are all the sports that we offer on our campus. Our largest ones being lacrosse, basketball, and um, uh, tennis. So those are our biggest teams. Soccer is also really big right now. The boys just won the Pacific West Conference last year. So they're still kind of riding that high on our campus. Our athletics program is really awesome too. We push forward academics first and then athletics. So all of our student athletes are fully engaged in their classes and we make sure that they're also getting that same well-rounded education as everyone else on our campus. So scholarships and grants, we do offer merit-based aid to all of our students who are on our campus from a 2.5 GPA to a 4.0 and above. Um, these merit awards, like I said, you're awarded them on the spot and students can get them and you can have them all the way through all of all the years that you're at Dominican. There's different grants, um, educational grants that we offer students and we also allow outside scholarship stacking. So students are allowed to bring in the scholarships that they can and um, that they're able to bring with them. So to apply, there's two ways to apply for our undergraduate students. There's the Common App, which is amazing. Um, we do have a free application, so it's free through the Common App. We also have one on our website, the Dominican application. Both are free. A personal essay is required. And for our nursing students, there are some additional materials that we do require for our nursing program. We do have uh, letters of recommendation. They are encouraged for everyone. We want to know a little a little bit more about you, and we like to have that one-on-one -on -one even through your application process. They are required for nursing applicants, but as I said, they are encouraged for all other students. So for FAFSA, I know FAFSA is a little tricky right now, um, but that is one of our steps to apply, even though, like I said, it's a little crazy for FAFSA right now. Um, so to connect with our admissions team, we offer campus tours five days a week, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. for students who are able to visit our campus. We also have in-person appointments for those who are visiting campus. We have Zoom appointments, phone appointments, and we do have people on our staff who are um, multilingual. So we have all sorts of different resources for that. And that's it from me. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Maddie, for sharing about Dominican University of California. We're moving on to our next school. So as San Francisco Bay University gets set, I just want to welcome um, everyone who's joined us and give a quick reminder about the Q&A box. You have a Q&A button on your screen. You can click that and you can enter a question for any of our representatives to answer. So it could be following up on a presentation, something you've heard, or a question you have for one of the schools to come. And we hope you'll use that Q&A box. Also keep an eye on the chat. Our reps will also be able to share contact information, maybe some follow-up resources resources with you as well to make it easy for you to ask more questions after today. All right, well, I'm going to turn it over to San Francisco Bay University. Oh, hey, Nina, you are muted. Got it. Thank Everybody you so much. Can, we all have that moment. And also, um, I'll just, dis I'll wait to disappear until your screen is shared so you'll know you're all set. Sure. 
Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. And yeah, let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, so um, my name is Nina Henry, and I am uh, honored with my colleague, Rebecca, uh, to be presenting with you today, San Francisco Bay University. Uh, so San Francisco Bay University is a small but very strong private four-year college located in Fremont, California, uh, right in the heart of the Silicon Valley. Um, because we're located in a hotspot for the tech industry, there are a lot of different internship opportunities and um, different job opportunities waiting for you guys to take advantage of. You can see there's tons of different um, businesses within our area, a lot of really popular, bigger businesses, but um, our educational experience is going to prepare you to take on different job opportunities and internships for those locations. Um, we also put a major focus on our bachelor and master's programs in business and computer science because of where we're located. And so you'll get that hands-on experience and industry leading experience within your education. Um, to start off, I'll talk about our bachelor in business administration program. It's about 120 units long. So in total, it'll take you about four years to complete, so long as you're taking about 12 units per term. While you're able to get a well-rounded education within the program, if you do have a specific area of interest that you're able, that you um, want to explore for your areas of study, um, there are quite a few such as ma uh, management, marketing, or business analytics. Um, our Bachelor in Computer Science program is also about the same length and offers a hands-on learning experience that will prepare you for real-world application once you complete the program. Um, some of the areas you can focus your studies in include cybersecurity, software engineering, data science, a couple other different areas, but all of this is going to be real hands-on, so you'll get practical experience that you can use toward the future. Uh, we also offer in-house tuition scholarships and grants that can significantly reduce and or even completely cover your tuition costs. And the only requirement for those that we look at are your GPA requirements. So all we're looking at are your transcripts for both admission and tuition scholarship opportunities. But overall, our mission is to provide uh, quality higher education to help our diverse community of students achieve their academic and career goals. And one of the ways that we're aiming to do that is with a new initiative that our school is extremely proud of called Startup Scholars. And Startup Scholars is a program that we're developing with the intention of breaking the barriers of cost for those who normally would not consider private college as an option. Uh, we plan to do that by offering 28 students complete tuition and housing coverage for the entire time that they're at San Francisco Bay University. And uh, with Startup Scholars, uh, we're gonna be investing in you by offering you full tuition coverage so you don't have to worry about affording uh, school, full tuition or full support services so that you have help and guidance throughout your time at school and a full investment towards your potential at school and the goals that you want to achieve. Um, as part of the program, Startup Scholars will receive a huge amount of support from different staff and faculty members including the president of the university himself, which means that while most students don't even know who the president of their university is, you would have direct access to the president of your school. Um, in addition to this and the full tuition and housing coverage, we also would be giving you a $10,000 investment towards a passion project that really matters to you and that gives you an opportunity to give back to your community and demonstrate your educational experience on campus. Uh, for admission, the GPA requirement is about a 2.0, but to be eligible for Startup Scholars, uh, you would need to have a 3.0 GPA be within a first generation student kind of description and uh, would need to commit to staying enrolled full time at SFBU for a minimum of two years. Um, if anyone's learning more information about, so if one, anyone's interested in learning more information about Startup Scholars or is interested in applying for the program, I'm putting up a QR code now. Uh, feel free to take down that information or scan the QR code and we'd be happy to discuss the program with you later. But uh, like I mentioned, the admissions process is relatively simple. Our student life on campus, it's a relatively small campus, but we try to keep our classroom sizes to about 18 to 20 students per instructor. So that way you have a personal connection with your instructor. Um, and we offer plenty of support services, but 
quite honestly, the campus is super fun. We have tons of different clubs that a lot of our students take pride in developing and um, loads of different activities on campus that would be available to you. Uh, throughout all of this, we basically just hope to accomplish. Um, we really just want to create more opportunities for you to receive the education that you deserve. Um, we can't wait for you to become a part of our SFBU community and look forward to guiding you through your educational experience. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Gina, for sharing San Francisco Bay with us tonight. All right. We are going to move to our next institution. And that will be the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Hello, thank you. I hope everyone's having a great evening. Give me one second. I will go ahead and share my screen with you. Is that showing on full display for you guys? Yes, it is, Kelsey. Thank you so much. I'll go back to this QR code if anyone wants to scan this for more information. Uh, you're welcome to sign up on our mailing list today as well. Um, but my name is Kelsey Kaplan. I'm the Assistant Director for Recruitment here at UNLV, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, we are located in the fabulous city of Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we were founded in 1957, so we are a top-tier research institution, and we've been around for a little over 60 years. So in our 60 years, we have grown a lot um, here in Las Vegas, and our community has grown with us. We have about 30,000 students here at UNLV, over 800 international students um, here at UNLV as well. We have a very diverse campus. We are the second most diverse college campus in the country. Uh, we also are a top 10 mil military friendly school. We have yellow ribbon certification and we have 69% ethnic diversity within our student body. Uh, so see, these are some of the things that UNLV is very proud of being a very large campus, top tier research institution, uh, being able to be such a diverse campus and serve our Las Vegas community and serve students from very diverse backgrounds. Uh, we have students who have graduated from UNLV at the age of 16, and we've had students who have graduated from UNLV at the age of 70. Uh, so we have a very diverse student body um, in a, a variety of different areas. And as I mentioned previously, we do have a very large international student population as well. Uh, we are a top tier research institution. We have 45 research centers and institutions in Las Vegas. Uh, so we are very interconnected with the, with the community here in Las Vegas as well. So our students here at UNLV have a lot of opportunities to connect with the industries in Las Vegas and get jobs and internships while they are here at UNLV. I think uh, that is one thing I can speak to as an alum of the campus and as someone who works with a lot of our students on campus. Our students have a lot of opportunities uh, to be both a college student at a great institution, but also being able to engage in those experiences that are really going to help them get jobs um, when they graduate from college and getting that hands-on experience while they are in college. Uh, so that's one of the things we really focus on here at UNLV. Uh, we're very fortunate uh, being such a large institution to have a very small average class size. So you can see our average class size sits at about 30 students and our student to faculty ratio is about 18 to one as well. Uh, so our students have a lot of opportunities to connect with their faculty members and the professors on campus. UNLV has over 300 majors to choose from, or 300 programs, um, about 80-something majors to choose from. We have minors, we have graduate uh, graduate schools at UNLV, professional programs. So we have the only dental medicine school in the city, in the uh, state of Nevada. We have the only law school in the state of Nevada. We have a great school of medicine. And then, of course, all of our undergraduate majors as well. If you do have any specific interest in anything, please let me know. We're happy to talk about that. Again, you can reach out. We also offer tours of a lot of our specialty areas, too. Uh, so for students who maybe are specifically interested in some um, area at UNLV, I would highly encourage them to visit our campus and visit that area. Our engineering um, department is open opening up a brand new building here in the spring 
and or here next spring or this spring, we're here, we're in 2024 already. <laughs> so in this spring of 2024, our School of Engineering has a brand new building we're opening. Our School of Hospitality uh, opened up a brand new building in 2018. Uh, so those are some of our top programs. Our hospitality program is ranked number one in the, U in the US and number two in the world. Uh, so those are some of our, our great programs. But again, we have over 80 majors to choose from in a lot of different areas. UNLV also has an honors college. So if you are interested in the honors college, they do have smaller class sizes, um, a little bit more personalized advising opportunities in the honors program. And if you are interested in the honors college, they do have their own application. So when you are a senior in high school, you would be able to submit that honors college application in addition to your UNLV application. And the honors college application is free. UNLV uh, obviously has a great academic opportunities, but we have great student organizations as well. Uh, UNLV has over 400 clubs and organizations. About 65% of our students are involved in a club or organization, uh, which means a lot of, if 65% of 30,000 students are enrolled uh, in a club or organization, that, that means there's a lot of students in the clubs and organizations. So we have a very active student campus uh, when it comes to that involvement, and we encourage students to get involved. We um, have welcome weeks when the campus opens. We have Rebel Ready Week to prepare students for campus uh, starting the week before school. So there's a lot of opportunities uh, for students to connect with that Rebel life as well. These are some of the events I was just talking about that you could check out. Um, and of course, in the interest of time, I am going to jump into some information on admissions processes and things like that. So uh, UNLV does require a 3.0 core academic GPA. We are on the common application and we do have our own application as well. UNLV does not review, um, other than our honors college, our general admissions does not review anything other than transcripts or test scores. So if you do have have that 3.0 GPA, uh, then you would be admitted to UNLV or you can submit those test scores. Uh, if you're not sure if you're admissible, we definitely encourage you to connect with your admissions counselor. That's important. Um, for my juniors on August 1, the app opens, um, priority deadline November 15th, and for seniors, June 1, the app will close. Um, so if you guys do have any questions or anything, um, feel free to stay connected with us on social media and I'll throw my stuff in there for you as well. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelsey, for presenting on UNLV. Our next school today will be John Cabot University. Yes, sorry about that. I'm just having uh, trouble with my PowerPoint, of course, right now, but this should be fine. All right. Here we go. Cool. So welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Ramsey. I'm part of John Cabot University, which is an American university in the heart of Rome. Uh, and I actually graduated from John Cabot a little over six years ago as well. Um, so let's jump right into it. Um, a few facts to know about JCU. So we are a very international school. Of course, being in Rome, we do get students from all around the world. We have students from over 75 different countries. Uh, we've been growing the past three years. Uh, we've had the biggest classes we've ever had every year the past three years, which is great. So we're just over 1,800 students now. Um, of course, I'll get into all of these uh, wonderful facts about JCU, uh, but we have about an 18 to 1 student to professor ratio. Um, we do have a bunch of financial aid and scholarships available. I believe 85% of our students receive some sort of scholarship from us. So, um, yeah. Uh, like I said, we have students from all around the world. So this is kind of the breakdown um, of our student body. So as you can see, we do grab students from uh, every corner. And, um, you know, that's that was my favorite part about going to JCU. It, of course, I could easily say it, it was living in Rome and just being able to, you know, experience that at that age. But it was definitely the people that you get to go to school with and, and share that experience with. Um, so this is our campus. We are right in the center of Rome. It's not like you're on the outskirts where, you know, as you can see, close to all those things that you want to be close to in Rome, like the Colosseum and Trevi Fountain, and we're right on the river. So it's a very beautiful uh, campus and area. We have our own fitness center, full gym. Um, we do have our own housing, which I will get to. Um, but yeah, so this is just to give you a little bit of an idea of where in Rome, if you were looking at a map, um, if you went to CJCU. Um, 
So if you, we do have uh, an urban campus, so a few buildings right near each other. They're within, you know, two to five minutes walking of each other. So very close in the city. Um, you know, you can stop and get a, a cappuccino on the way to class. Um, so yeah, your classes will be split up into these different campuses. Um, so a few reasons to join uh, a place like JCU and, you know, an American university outside of America. Um, one is, you know, getting to experience all of the resources that Rome has. I mean, there's so many, we do offer a lot of internships, like which I'll try to get to. Um, you know, there's a lot of organizations that have their headquarters in Rome. Um, it's a very central location to be in Europe. So a lot of travel opportunities, of course, going to Europe, you know, there's a, a lot of travel anywhere. Um, but lots of cultural immersion, like I'm saying, you know, you, you are mixing with people from all around the world, which it's really good to put yourself in that type of environment, especially for four years, uh, it really enhances your communication skills. Um, and yeah, you're in one of the oldest cities in the world. And, uh, I don't need to explain the, uh, um, importance of, you know, the history in ancient Rome and things like that. Um, but so our academics, we do have, um, like I said, an 18 to one per student to professor ratio. So pretty small classes. You actually get to know your professor, which is one of my uh, other favorite things is now when I go and visit Rome and visit John Cabot, I can see some of my old professors and they're like old friends. So um, it is really like that. Um, we do have professors from all around the world as well. So they kind of mirror the student body very well. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, lots of resources for students doing research and um, there's tutoring and mentoring. So here are majors and minors. Um, we do have three main areas, so business and economics, political uh, and social sciences, and humanities. So um, yeah, you can kind of mix and match and you can double major, you can double minor, um, but please let me know if you guys have questions about the specific majors. Um, so even while being abroad, you can study abroad. Uh, so I know going to Rome might be enough for you, but we do have partnerships with students, uh, with schools around the world. So you can study abroad for a semester, even up to a full year. And there's no difference in tuition whatsoever. So, uh, maybe you can go to Rome for, you know, most of the time, spend a year in Japan, come back to Rome. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, opportunities when you're over there. Um, like I said, we do offer a lot of internships and career opportunities. That's something that's huge at John Cabot. Um, I won't go too much into it right now because I think I'm running out of time. Um, but that is a big thing. So it's very likely that you do get an internship when you're there. Um, like I said, a lot of headquarters, very central European city. Um, so student life. Um, we got tons of clubs and organizations. We need to kind of be their new home because a lot of people are coming so far, far away from their home. So um there are a lot of ways to get involved with the community and um, not only experience the Italian culture, but all so many different other cultures through this people that you're meeting and, um, you know, sharing these clubs with. Uh, so our athletics, we do have uh, sports teams. So the biggest teams, varsity, we like to call it, does work a little bit different over there in Italy. Um, our soccer, basketball, volleyball, and cheerleading. And then we have, you know, a bunch of fitness classes. Like I said, we have a full gym and then uh, classes as well, like yoga and, um, you know, uh, all, all kinds of stuff, meditation. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we have kind of external agreements where we um, point you to in the right direction in Rome, if you wanted uh, to play any of those other sports. Uh, we do tons of cultural programs. So of course, being in, in Italy, people, we know people want to come and see where they are and see the uh, the culture and experience as much as they can. So we want to help them do that. There's lots of cooking classes, uh, food tours, um, you know, historical tours, you get to go around, we do day trips and even weekend trips. So um, that's also really nice because it's JCU run. Um, and our student services. So there's lots of uh, resources for health and well-being. My time is running out. So I'll get down to the, the nitty gritty. Um, if you guys want to contact me, I'll put my contact information in the chat. Um, but definitely look us up if you're interested in going abroad or maybe studying abroad. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any specific questions. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ramsey, for presenting on John Cabot. All right, we're on to our next school, and that will be UC Santa Barbara. All right. Hi, everyone. Hope everyone is having a good night. I am going to go ahead and share my screen real quick. Um, I hope this is appropriate. I hope everyone can see this. All right. Perfect. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Maria. It's very nice to 
not see all of y'all, but I'm glad that you're all here. I am one of the freshman admissions counselors here at UCSB, and I'm going to go ahead and present just a brief overview about our campus um, and some eligibility requirements in terms of admissions. So starting off, I do want to go ahead and talk about UC Santa Barbara and where we are located. So UCSB is going to be located alongside the central coast of California. Um, as you can see here on this beautiful picture of California, we are pretty close by to other major cities in California, such as LA, um, Orange County, and definitely Northern, Northern California is a bit more ways, but there's a variety of different ways for students to come and visit our campus, whether they're coming from Southern California or Northern California. We do have a local airport just located about a mile away from our main campus, so students are more than welcome uh, to come and visit us whenever they like or come whenever they're visiting from home. Um, so, one other thing I do want to mention is that given the fact that we are one of the major universities alongside the Central Coast, uh, students are going to have a wide variety of different pre-professional opportunities in the area. There's a wide variety of different local hospitals where students are able to intern at, as well as having the opportunity to join a wide variety of different tech companies or law firms in the area. In terms of size, we are going to be um, considered a mid-sized university across uh, the UC um, public system. So we have 23,000 undergraduates and 3,000 graduate students. Given that ratio, our students are going to be able to uh, have a variety of different professional opportunities um, as they are not going to be competing with our graduate students for research opportunities or internships. Now, I did mention that we are considered a mid-sized university across the UC campuses just because some of our UC campus sisters can have as many as 45,000 students, while as others can have around 8,000 students. So with our 26,000 student population, we are going fi to fit right into that sweet middle. Now, I am going to go ahead and talk about academics real quickly. Here at UCSB, we are going to have over 100 different majors that our students are able to choose from. I do want to highlight that all of these majors are going to be divided into our three different academic colleges. Our largest academic college will be the College of Letters and Science, where you are going to find a wide majority of our majors, anything ranging from social sciences, humanities, as well as STEM. Students are going to find that we have a very flexible curriculum um, so if they're interested in, they can always have the opportunity to discover different interests, add on a double major, or even minor in something that they are interested in. One thing I do want to note for admissions is that within the College of Letters and Science, we do not admit by major, so we do offer undeclared as an option for our incoming freshman students. One thing I want to note is that the exception to this would be our addition-based major. So if you're interested in dance or music, you will have to audition for those. But other than that, if you know what you would like to study or if you have an idea or don't know quite yet what you want to study, you're always more than welcome to apply with any major within the college of letters and science. Moving on to our second college, our College of Engineering, we're going to have five different majors, those ranging from computer science, computer engineering, electrical, mechanical, um, and chemical engineering. Students are going to find that this is a very small college. It's actually the smallest um, college of engineering across all the UC campuses. Um, so it's going to be the smallest program with around 1,500 students with a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. One thing I do want to note for admission purposes is that we do admit by major within the College of Engineering. Uh, so we do recommend that students select uh, one of the five different majors as their primary choice on that UC application. We also do recommend that students are challenging themselves with a wide variety of different academic courses, primarily in mathematics. So if students are able to take pre-calculus or higher, that will make them a more competitive um, applicant for this selective engineering program. Our last college is our College of Creative Studies, and this specific college is going to focus on providing students the opportunity to work on their own independent research and creative projects. Students will have access to a faculty mentor and will have opportunities to explore a wide variety of different disciplines within the specific college. We have majors that range from writing and literature composition to physics and computing. So students are really able uh, to pick and choose from whatever they'd like within the College of Creative Studies. For admission purposes, students will also have to submit a supplemental application um, that can be found on the College of Creative Studies website that they will go ahead and 
review to see if that student is a good fit for this specific college. Here at UCSB, students are really going to have an opportunity to engage in a rich academic life um, while also having a very vibrant social scene. With over 500 different campus organizations, students are really able to find a community here on campus. We're also going to be considered a residential university as about 80% of our students are going to be living in within a mile radius of the campus. So everyone is within a walking, biking, or um, skateboarding distance. We're also going to have 19 Division I NCAA teams, as well as different sport club and intramural sports teams on our campus. So students are able to still compete at a wide variety of different levels when it comes to athletics. Students will also have the opportunity to study abroad if that's something they would like. We have over 400 different study abroad programs and 40 different countries. So wherever you would like to go, we most likely will have a program for students to participate in. I do want to go ahead and talk about those freshman eligibility um, and selection processes that we do on our end here at UCSB. So in terms of applying to a UC campus, we're all going to have the same eligibility requirements. Uh, we're all going to have what is known as the A through G subject area courses, as well as the UC mm -hmm. GPA. Yes, sorry. I'm um, so sorry. We yeah. reached our six minutes. Yeah, sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and just go to the end and I'll go ahead and add my um, contact info for anybody who has okay. any questions. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. I know everyone, we all just have so much more we can share. It's so hard to do six minutes, but these representatives do an incredible job of that. Um, well, we hope everyone's enjoyed so far the great sneak peeks at these six amazing schools. We still have a few more minutes and I wanna make sure that any last questions in the Q&A box can get answered and that everyone can get the contact information from the chat to follow up after today. So while our attendees are thinking about that, I'm gonna invite a representative from each of our schools to come back on. And I'm gonna ask a, a question for each of you to answer. Um, we'll start with the first school. Um, so we'll start with Oxy and then we'll go in the same order you presented down to UC Santa Barbara. When the person ahead of you finishes, just unmute and jump right on in. So you all are the admissions professionals with tons of great information. So what is one of your top tips or a piece of advice that you would give to someone going through the college search process? First of all, it's really stressful. It should not be this stressful. So I really think if I could speak to my high school self, I would say prioritize self-care you will go to a college. You will. It might not be your first choice college. You will go to a college. If it's not your favorite college in the world. You'll transfer. So many great colleges have wonderful, wonderful transfer programs, with really, really great success rates for transfer students. And I just think um, if you can go easy on yourself, please do. Awesome. Um, so mine is really simple, but check your email. I think that's a big one. Um, everyone's not in their heads. Um, but we are sending you guys a lot of information. It can definitely be overwhelming at times, but I will say that information is super helpful. A lot of these questions I'm seeing in the chat, I'm sure that info is maybe in some of those emails, as well as when you're getting updates about, you know, your admissions decisions, those are typically in your email as well, um, as well as those next steps. So I definitely, that's a big one. Check your email. Um, and I know some people, the, the thing I wish I did when I was in high school was make an email just for my college admissions process. That would have made it really organized. Um, but yeah, definitely check your email. Um, I would say uh, it's a two-parter. Start early and it's never too late. Uh, definitely start your applications as early as possible. That gives admissions counselors enough time to actually get to your application and get through the whole entire process so that way you have a shot at getting a response as quickly as possible and then you can you know start the next steps to securing your spot at whatever your dream university is but also if you happen to miss a deadline that's okay it's never too late apply for the next term you never know which schools are going to have rolling deadlines or sometimes maybe they take late applications so definitely check with your admissions professional or professionals and see if there's an opportunity to still sneak a, a slot in there for the next term
Hello. My advice would just be that it's a, a very individualized process and uh, to make sure you're focusing on yourself and what you want as you're transitioning from high school to college. And then also that every college is also different too. So make sure you're focused on the colleges you want to go to and making sure you're finding the information, checking your emails, visiting those, ca those campuses and focusing on those as well. Thank you all. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, you're going to be there for quite a long time at these universities. So, uh, of course, you can transfer. She was right. Uh, but I say do a good amount of research on the area that you're going to as well. Um, not just the school, but, you know, you're going to be in that surrounding area. So if you like cities being, you know, maybe try to go to a nice city. If you like to be uh, out in nature, maybe be closer to that. So take in the surroundings as well. I would definitely agree with most what everybody has said here. I think definitely the first point, taking care of yourself, really making sure that you're not stressing your out, yourself out so much, just because I feel like as I've connected with students, you're, you always seem so worried, which is very, very understandable. But we also want to make sure that you are taking time for yourself. So starting early to give yourself enough time is always my best piece of advice. That way, towards the end, you're not rushing through everything. Um, so that, that's what I advise, definitely. Uh, this has all been such great advice. I hope that um, everyone watching too, when you see the heads nod, you know, every piece of uh, every tip you just received really is meaningful, no matter what the school type is, where it's located, big, small. Um, these are just some real words of wisdom to help you navigate through this search process. So thank you to our representatives. It is not an easy feat to share both academic and community information in six minutes, but you do a great job um, really giving that insight today. I I hope that all of our uh, families and students and counselors who are watching not only follow up, um, you know, with maybe the schools that they came here to learn about, but they're thinking, I've got six schools I've got to check out even more after today. And remember, all these questions you have, please reach out to these counselors and their colleagues um, to ask even more and get more insight. All right, now for the logistics of wrapping up. When you uh, close your box tonight, when you close the window, there's going to be a link to just a very quick five question survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. We also want to remind you that this session was recorded as well as all of the sessions um, that are part of this College Fair programming tonight. So in the coming days, you'll be able to find all of these recordings at the same website where you initially registered, strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. -A -C. So we hope that everyone had a lot of fun and best of luck in your college search process. It is an exciting journey ahead. Good night.